I watched all the videos on resin safety and researched the topic. Then I condensed it into this simple video so that you can see the six main steps that you need to take in order to work with resin safely. The chemicals in epoxy resin systems can affect your health when they come in contact with your skin or if they evaporate to form a mist or dust in the air you breathe. It's recommended to wear a respirator mask that's designed to filter organic vapors and particulates. Regular dust masks, or N95 masks, will not filter out the harsh chemical vapors created when resin and hardeners are mixed or heated. Not all resins are created equal, and different resins have different levels of toxicity. I have tried various resins with different qualities and pros and cons. Right now I use one that has no VOCs and is FDA approved, but still contains the cancer and reproductive harm warning. Do your research and shop smart. Ask the resin company you're looking at for their SDS. The safety data sheet is a detailed informational document prepared by the manufacturer or importer of a hazardous chemical. It lists information relating to occupational safety and health for the use of the product, and it must disclose any warnings or risks, as well as recommended PPE, personal protective equipment. Along with skin and lung irritation, the eyes can be affected by epoxy exposure. Use snug fitting eye protection like this, or you can get a respirator mask that includes eye protection like an all-in-one mask. The next step to resin safety is hand protection. Many experts prefer nitrile gloves for applications that involve hazardous chemicals. Disposable nitrile gloves are typically latex-free and powder-free, and nitrile gloves are more durable and protective than plastic or latex. Quick reminder to wear long sleeve clothing, preferably old clothing you don't care about, just in case it gets resin on it. Keep rubbing alcohol handy while working with resin. If you have any spills or drips, or get the resin where you don't want it to be, simply pour some of the alcohol in a paper towel and clean it off before the resin hardens. I wanna also add in another note. While well, resins are not equal, people are also different from each other. Some people have a sensitivity or allergic reaction to resin, while some people are fine. I figure it's better to be safe than sorry. Most of us are using heat with resin, a torch, or a heat gun to pop air bubbles or blend colors. I've had a huge container of resin flash gear on me and a canvas start smoking in my basement. So don't mess around, guys. Keep a fire extinguisher in your workspace. I have four more environmental safety precautions to go over with you. But while I'm just putting these items away, I just want to introduce myself. My name's Anna. I'm a resin artist and a fluid artist. I do acrylic pour paintings as well as resin art. I work out of a studio in my basement, so I work online and at craft fairs and art shows. And I do lots of YouTube videos, tutorials, uh, demos of different artworks, as well as artist chats on different topics like making money with our art or finding time to make art. For protecting work surfaces, plastic garbage bags and silicone craft mats work really well. I use them on my countertops. Resin will soak through newspaper and butcher paper, so make sure to have something waterproof under your project. For mixing resin, you can buy handy silicone containers with measurements labeled on them. Just make sure to clean the containers directly after use before the resin hardens. I use rubbing alcohol and paper towels to do this. However, I find these containers difficult to keep clean because the resin working time is so short, so I gravitate towards using plastic containers that I can throw away. These are things like yogurt and sour cream tubs, even jelly or pasta jars. I save and wash them after the food is gone and reuse them all for resin projects. After cleaning up a project, I like to take all the trash, like leftover resin, containers, paper towels, craft mixing sticks, etc., out of the house and get it in the dumpster to clear out any smells or traces of chemicals. The next environmental concern, probably the most important, is keeping epoxy products out of the reach of children. If you have kids or pets, make sure they can't get into this stuff. My resin is stored under the sink in my studio in the basement where my kids play. The older ones know to stay away from the art supplies, but to ensure the safety of the toddlers, I installed two sturdy baby gates on either side of the bar where the resin and other hazardous materials are kept. The final main safety precaution is ventilation. Open windows, and if you can, work in a garage or shed and turn on a fan or air purification system. Of course, resin is finicky and has to be at a certain temperature to use, so keep that in mind when exposing your workspace to outside climates. I hope this video has been helpful and dispelled any worries or confusion about the safety of using resin. Keep in mind, I'm not an expert on resin, just an artist like you, but I have done a lot of experimentation and reading on this topic. Hit thumbs up if you benefited from the information provided, and any questions you still have, please leave those in the comments and I will do my best to find you the answer. To make these resin safety precautions easy for you to remember, I created a resin safety checklist which includes all the rules and tips in this video, plus bonus information and product recommendations. You can grab that by clicking the link in the description below. May your resin creating experience be successful, safe, and sustainable. Thanks for watching.